Welcome to the next edition of the Rare Business Podcast. Today with me I have Josh Kaufman, author of The First 20 Hours, How to Learn Anything Fast. Now, over to the interview. So, first of all, thank you. Thank you. For, for making great the, to be here. For make, making the time. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about you? Yeah. Your backgrounds, where you've come from, what you've done before, because I know there's, this is, this. we'll talk about the book, but the second book. Second book, yes. And so, life sketch, thumbnail. Yeah, so, so actually, straight out of college, I uh, started working for a big company, Procter okay. & Gamble, and uh, doing product development stuff for cleaning products, which is actually way more fascinating than it sounds. It's like, <laughs> I was a guy, yeah, like, I, I, uh, so one of my first projects, I worked with the guy who invented the Swiffer cleaning pads. Okay. And it was a, a wonderful combination of, you know, look at, looking at science and technology, like what can we do with materials? Yeah. And then going out and talking to people about what they wanted the experience of cleaning their home to be like, and, and bringing those together and, and making things. Uh-huh. Really enjoyed that. So I worked in a, in marketing at Procter and Gamble for a okay. number of years, and um, I joined the company in, in odd circumstances. Really, there was a great program at my college uh, called Cooperative Education, where okay. you basically spend half your time at school and half of your time actually working okay. in a company. Uh, so yeah. I started working for the company as a sophomore in in college, and uh, and by the time that I graduated. I had a full-time offer to go into marketing at, at P&G, the, uh, which was great. The, the intimidating part about that is I was just coming out of my undergrad. I didn't feel like I, I knew a lot about business yet. Yeah. And every single person that I was going to be working with on a daily basis had just graduated from a top 10 ranked MBA school. Right. It's like, okay, this is you know, my minor problem. I want to feel like I know what I'm doing. I want to feel like, right. you know, I'm, I'm going to be able to succeed in this particular environment. So, but it didn't make sense for me to quit my job and go to school. And so... Not to take an MBA. Yeah. <laughs> which costs, what, six figures? Oh, easily. It, and if you, if you in account the States, for... That is. I mean, I've got an MBA from sort of here, but if I tot it up, kind of, yeah, it's not six figures, it's kind of a sterling terms, but it's kind of like expensive. Yeah. The, the latest research is if you account for all of the costs. So tuition, books, living expenses, opportunity cost of lost wages. Yeah. Top schools can now put you back around 300,000 US dollars. Blimey. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I did mine in 99, 2000. Um, yeah, if I tot it all up and what I'm actually costing, cost 11, yeah, that's probably nearly, you could make a case for six figures sterling. Yeah. Yeah. And then I asked myself, was it really worth it? Right. <laughs> in, in, hindsight, in hindsight, no comment. Yeah. 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 So, so in, you know, I'm, I'm in the situation. It's like, should I, should I go? Should I? So, you know, I started doing some research into, into what it would take. And, yeah. and at that time for me, it didn't make sense to quit my job, go back to school, borrow a bunch of money to come back to the job that I, I already had. Yeah, 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 sure. So, but I was interested in, in learning all of these things. Mm -hmm. So, so I ended up doing what, what ended up being a very entrepreneurial thing. I just said, well, you know, this is stuff that I want to learn. Somebody else might want to know it as well. Yeah. I'm fully capable of going to the library and picking up a book on business and starting to read. So that's Mm -hmm. what I did. Okay. And that developed into my first website, Mm personalmba.com, because I was reading and learning and sharing what I was learning with other people. Sure. And uh, a lot of other people were interested in doing the same thing, lo and behold. So... That's where my first book, The Personal MBA, here in, in the UK, it's a, a world-class business education in a single volume is the subtitle. Okay. And uh, in the US, it's The Personal MBA, Master the Art of Business. Okay. And that, that book came as, uh, as a result of, I was reading all of these things and learning a lot, but I was reading hundreds, you know, at this point, thousands of, of business books. You see the same ideas come up over and over, yeah. right? And I, and I wish sometimes people would write books that were this thick. Yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so the whole idea of the first book is, wouldn't it be awesome if somebody just took all of the good fundamental ideas, like what you really need to know about business, yeah. and just put them all into one book, instead of having them spread out across hundreds or thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how the first book came to be, uh, has, has done extremely well, because you know this, this is a big problem. People want to understand business so they can start a new company yeah, yeah. or improve in their career. And it's um, a cost-benefit sort of analysis yeah. or something that people do. Yeah, and if you can get that in a 10-pound book, yeah. amazing. How so many languages is it in there? It's in 12 languages so nice. far. And I think um, the, the latest, it's like 130, 140,000 copies worldwide. 
Nice. So good yeah. job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, super fun because you know it's it's I I really like both the process of taking a bunch of information and yeah. really distilling it down into like here's the useful part. Here's what yeah, you really yeah. need to understand. Uh -huh. And then it's fun to hear the stories of people who's like, I, I know nothing about business, and I read this book, and now I'm starting this venture, and it's working. Like, I, nice. I makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And so when was that? When was that first published? The personal MBA? Uh, early 2011. So like January 2011. So the, but the website came first. Yes, the website existed for years. Right. And just like this this random side project that I was yeah. working on just because I needed it. I mean, that's, I think that's what's interesting about that is that sometimes it almost dispels that, it goes some way towards dispelling that kind of myth that sometimes you have to build it, yeah. do the hard yards, Yep. and there's no promise of getting the big reward and making it sort of mm -hmm. thing, but you actually have to do it and do it because it makes sense to you because you want to do it yeah. anyway. But actually, if you do a really great job with something, then it's pretty there's quite a high likelihood that somebody else is going to go that's a great job and we actually need to think about how do we distribute that and develop yeah. it and everything else. so nice I, I am very mu much an, an accidental author I did not set out to go and, and do this yeah. it was, I was doing something useful that I needed and sharing it with other people and they said this is interesting we would like more of this yeah it's like okay can I, we I'll have it do that a, can we have it in a different format exactly yeah yeah nice so the new book the first 20 hours, how to learn anything fast. Yes. So is that just an outgrowth of the, the process of the um, the personal MBA and that, uh, and that whole sort of thing? Or is it something completely different, a different sort of project? A mix of both, okay. actually. So, so one of the things that makes the personal MBA interesting as a business book in general mm -hmm. is it treats business as a skill, something that you can learn about something that yeah. you can practice and something that you can get better at. Mm -hmm. And so I was interested in taking that approach to learning things in general and, and, and trying to put together a method of like how do you learn anything? You mm -hmm. know, what if it what if it's not just like a knowledge area like business? Like yeah. what if it's something where performance really matters? Mm -hmm. And and there are thousands, millions of things that, that you could sit down and, and choose to learn. Some of those are things that will help you with your career. So, for example, learning how to market your services better or, or products better. Like, copywriting <coughs> is a very valuable skill, mm -hmm. but it takes practice uh, mm -hmm. to be able to perform at a level where you can write something down that makes people want to buy something. Yeah, absolutely. I think, it's, it was in, I think the interesting, the, the distinction that you, that you make in the very beginning of the book around the difference between learning and skill acquisition, mm -hmm. I think that's really uh, useful because... I mean, and particularly the examples that you use, and you talk about how people kind of learn and acquire, it's like data and knowledge, but to, uh, just to pass an exam, not actually, and that's the sort of the function of the, the it's almost like the, the whole education process, is right. like, is not to learn stuff, but it's to pass exams. Mm -hmm. But actually, real learning is about, as you say, is, is a bit like, uh, it's almost to quote Eric. Um, Eric Reese is almost to take that, that minimal viable product yeah. sort of approach to to what I need to know to be dangerous. Right. Which yeah, it's, it's like what what do you what do you need to know about the topic area to have a starting point on figuring out how to do it. Yeah. So, you know, all of the so the things that I talk about in, in business um, was very much a deconstruct like what are we doing here? Yeah. Like what it, what is the, the goal of the business? What are the parts? How do the parts fit together? Okay. So anything, you know, in terms of, of skill acquisition, anything that helps you create something valuable for other people or attract their attention and make them interested in whatever it is yeah. or s encourage people to pull out their wallet, checkbook, credit card and actually give you money for it, deliver it in a way that makes them happy yeah. and look at the money flowing out and the money flowing in and say, is it enough? Yeah. Is it enough to make our effort worthwhile? Anything that helps you actually do that, those are the things that are going to help you build your business. I think I think that's absolutely true and I think there's, the, there's an interesting kind of idea, an interesting concept that I always sort of play around with and it's, you know, people talk about, you know, why people don't do things and talk about procrastination mm -hmm. and talk about it. But actually I think if you think about things if I think when I think about things like that, and I think that's an it's a procrastination is a name for inertia. Yes. And there's two is is the way I look at it, there's two states in the universe. There's one of inertia and there's one of momentum. That that's that's it. You're either here or you're here, and you don't need to be moving at 100 miles an hour if you're in momentum. But you could be moving at 
one mile an hour, then it's still you're still moving, yes. as it were. And I guess what that's what I guess what you're you're trying to do here is almost like break things down to go. There's a point where you don't know something, and then there's a point where you do know something, but you're moving, and mm -hmm. then because you're moving, you're more able to acquire sort of more knowledge and more easier. It's easier to do it. Yeah, I I like that a lot. And and really, you know, what I what I found in the process of the book is is the the biggest barriers to just getting started in the first place. Yeah, they're not intellectual. We're all smart enough to sit down and learn something. Sure, it's it's all the big scary feeling of oh my gosh, I don't know where to begin. Yes, there's there's the uh, the intimidation or or the um, the fear that I'm going to try it and I'm not going to be any good at it. Mm -hmm. There is. The, the early out if you get to the process of trying it at all the yeah. first hours are terrible uh -huh. for everybody yeah. and and so you know a lot of the process of getting moving in the first place is uh, overcoming a lot of the very emotional barriers to yeah Absolutely. not being comfortable with the process well it, yeah it's and, and just and and feeling sort of not in control and 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 feeling that you don't understand and feeling a bit lost and all of that yeah. sort of stuff and that is a, it's a yeah, really emotional sort of thing so here's here's a question I mean the, the, I read as you, uh, if you like, talk about it in the beginning, so you don't have to read it sort of back to back. You sure. dip in and dip in. Yeah. There was a bit that, that I read where I, because the one that, that stood out for me was, it was a program. Yes. One. So I thought, yeah, my it speaks to my inner geek. Right. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd like to know how to do that. And then so I got into it and I thought, oh, yeah, that's okay now. I'm like, no, when I get some time, I'm gonna have a go at that. Uh -huh. And there was also another one which I've sort of still that's that you put that on my list. Excellent. Do. I'm glad to hear that. But, but there was one that I really wanted you to. You started mentioning it, and I thought, oh, why didn't you do that? And it was rock climbing. Yeah. Because I'm a rock climber. Really? Yeah. That's cool. So, um, so I was thinking that, that would be interesting to see how you broke that that, broke yeah. that down. But that's probably that's. I'll, I'll leave. I'll put that to one side for a second. But <laughs> my, my, I guess my question is, it was yoga, programming, go ukulele, windsurfing. Typing. Ah, touch, training, touch typing, touch typing, touch typing, touch yeah. typing. Which went into replacing your keyboard and reprogramming. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I looked at that and I was like, I'm not even going there because I just break <laughs> my computer. I'll never forgive myself for that. But how did you pick those four things, or uh, six things rather? Was it just trying to be random and representative and sort of so broad? Or is it purely driven by personal interest? Yeah, so it was, a, it was actually a combination. Okay. So I have, I have actually a list on, on, on my computer of all the things that I would be interested in learning at some point okay. in my life. And um, and so what I wanted to do for the book is is I am viscerally uncomfortable with the idea of teaching something if I'm not absolutely sure if it works. Okay. And so, you know, part of uh, the, the early part of this project was, you know, going into the cognitive psychology stacks at a, at a large academic library and looking at the actual studies. Like, right. what does science, what does psychology say about how we learn and how we can learn faster. Mm -hmm. um, there's almost seven, eight decades of research on mm -hmm. this and in all sorts of different skills. Yeah. So the first part of the project was putting together the method. Yeah. Like, okay, based on what I'm reading, this is what I'm hearing would, would work the best. But I, I also wanted to field test that with some very specific skills to make sure it works. So let me ask you, though, just jump in there. So sure. From a, from a book project and a book proposal perspective, did you have to go through all of this and then sell the idea to the publisher? No. Or you kind of came up with the idea and they said, the publisher went, oh, that sounds cool, now go off and sort of do it. Yes. So there was a bit of risk for both of there you. There was risk because, you know, and, and I was personally prepared, like, I have this idea about how we can learn things quicker. This might not work. This might not work. And so, you know, it's <laughs> like, nice. you, you sign the contract and you receive, like, the first part of the advance, which is always really nice. And, and you know, for me, that first part of the advance always goes into a bank account and it just sits. Right. Because if the project goes sideways, it's like, <coughs> if I try this and I'm horrible and, and it doesn't work, it's like, okay, this didn't work. We're going to do something else. Like, yeah. here's here's your money back and, and, and we'll just move on. But, yeah, it's like, you know, as... As a teacher, in, in a sense, I, I need to make sure that this stuff works before I tell other people that it's a good idea to do it. Yeah, sure. And so the, the skills that, that I talk about in the book were that combination of something that I was just personally interested in, in learning for myself. Right. But also, I wanted to make sure that I had a good mix of both cognitive skills, thinking skills, and motor skills, yep. so things you do with your body. I wanted to have a mix of things that you might learn professionally, yep. like programming, uh -huh. and things that you learn for fun, like 
windsurfing or playing ukulele, musical, yeah. yeah, go or whatever. Right. So so, yeah, the skills in the book were that that good combination okay. of covering the whole gamut of, of skill acquisition and doing that in a way that was also true to my interests. So of the six, which ones was the hardest and okay. also which ones are you still sort of doing? Or rather, because it, it, there, there is a, I guess there is a danger with all, all, a lot of this is that you do it and you go, ah, I've done it. Yes. No, uh-huh. no, 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 you know, no flies on me and then you're just, you sort of move on to the next thing. And you can almost do it for a self-satisfaction sort of thing. So, which ones of this, all six of them, which ones were, were, were hardest, and which ones are you still doing? Okay. So, so the hardest one by far was windsurfing. Okay. I am not a super physically coordinated individual. <laughs> okay. And I, I had, uh, I didn't realize this until I was out on the board in the water for the first time. I have never done anything that required balance on a moving surface before, <laughs> like skateboarding yeah. or it's just like. So, so really, really weird. And so, like, you're out on the water, and the wind is blowing, you're trying to hold the sail upright by hand, and, you know, waves. And it, it, that, that part was... You have to listen was, to your feet as well as kind of control your hands and your upper body. Yeah, and I, I didn't really realize how difficult that can be until I was out there. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, I tell this story in the book. My first 25 minutes out on the water mm-hmm. windsurfing were one of the most <coughs> miserable experiences of my entire life. I mean, I drank I drank so much lake water that it, I was nauseous. Like, I couldn't get back to where I started from. I yeah. was exhausted. Like, it was just horrible. But then, you know, you, you get some of that early experience, and then I could go back and read some of the books that I picked up on windsurfing. I was like, oh. Uh, that's how that works. That's uh, why you put the dagger board down, because yeah. it helps you, you know, keep you from falling. So, yeah, that was the hardest. And um, it was also the hardest because... I was relying on something in the environment to be right before yeah. I could practice. If the wind wasn't blowing, I couldn't go out. Yeah, sure. So, so that was challenging in, in a number of ways. In terms of, of what I'm still doing, I'm actually still doing five of the six skills. Cool. So still playing the ukulele, still programming, still typing on my weird keyboard, uh, still doing yoga, still windsurfing. Go was the one. Uh-huh. So the, the Chinese, for, yeah. for those who aren't familiar, the Chinese... Uh, board game with the black and white stones. Yeah, that's, it's, oh, the ones you turn over. No, that, that's actually a variant based on that's Go. That's Reverso. Re, uh, Reversi or um, Othello. Yes. Yes. So so go, those, uh, Reversi and Othello came from Go. Go's the original game. Right. And Go is when you put counters on the on the board yes. rather than actually turning them yes, over. Yes, and it's, it's a game of surrounding your opponent's right. stones. Yes, so, which is similar to, there's uh, two versions of Backgammon. Yes. So the same sort of if you you know some of the, the older pieces are on and some that you start with pieces yes. off the board. Yeah. Play both. So yeah. So the 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 point of the game is it's very similar to chess in a, in a way that you're right. sitting across from an opponent, you know, kind of two opposing generals marshalling their forces, <coughs> kind of thing. But instead of directly capturing the other side's pieces like in a one-on-one thing, it's very much you know a large scale map of a conflict, and you're trying to surround the opposing general, right. kind of thing. Okay. That was something that, that I wanted to learn for a long time, just out of personal interest. It's like, this seems like a really cool game. I would love yeah. to learn how to play that. And and became reasonably good in, in the 20 hours that I put into it, but that was very much a satisfaction of the curiosity. Okay. And so for me, I spend quite a bit of my day both writing and programming. Mm-hmm. And when I'm done with that, it feels like Go kind of uses the same parts of my brain. It's like... This is not relaxing for me. I need, yeah, to, yeah. I need to like go out on the water and sure. stop thinking for a while. <laughs> no, no, that's, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. I mean, and I can com- I completely get that, but it's good to know that you sort of continued on with the majority of it, yeah. of those kind of skills. But I guess my the, the next thing I was thinking about was the sort of the broader application for people that are. If I think about the audience for the blog, the people mm-hmm. that are executives in in big corporates or their entrepreneurs running their own businesses and why do you think it's this idea of learning fast or applying yourself skill acquisition is important for them and, 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 and is it is it to do with staying ahead developing their own skills their business is it all of that or was it if you like if I'm an entrepreneur why is it important to me why should I be paying attention yeah to my question so it if you want to be, if you want to have a satisfying career, whatever yeah. that means to you, yeah, there are 
skills that you could learn how to do that would make your job both easier and allow you to perform better, whatever okay. that better performance means to you. Yeah. So if you're an entrepreneur, there are things that you can learn about business that can really help you get to wherever it is that you want to go in a, in a way more direct way. Yeah. As a leader of, of a larger organization, management is a skill. Mm -hmm. Leadership is a skill. Sure. And you also have a vested interest in helping your employees and your contractors and, and everybody surrounding your business develop skills to help your company reach its goals. There's a leading by example element exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, you know, combine that with the reality of every single person in the world is strapped for time and attention. Yeah. Wait, Nobody what? has enough time. Yeah. So, so the whole idea of, of rapid learning and, and rapid skill acquisition is, is less about, you know, the turbocharging your brain aspect. Because when you sit down and practice, our brains are built for this stuff. Like, we, we do it automatically. Mm -hmm. The real trick is not doing all of the inefficient, frustrating, time-sucking, energy-sucking <coughs> things yeah. that it's very easy to do if you don't have an approach to doing it in an efficient way. Yeah, okay. So the other thing I was thinking that was, that was interesting that was, so I thought, to me, this book, so it's too, well, it feels like a start. Yes. And there's a, there's a, there's a part of me that, 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 that thinks, going back to the point I made before about inertia and momentum, even with a structure and a method like mm -hmm. this, there still is a take the first step. Yeah, you have element. to sit down and practice. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come do something. But also that there, there, there is a skill in deconstructing things yes. as well. And so it made me think that, and I thought about this book and you thought you've done these six things but you've also got a long list of things but also there's a whole bunch of other people that will buy the book and then do their own sort of thing uh -huh. are you going to create this hub for getting started and learning sort of stuff and for allowing people to share their own stories about how to deconstruct things yes. and what they're planning that's, <laughs> that's, that's already starting yeah and so actually if you go to first20hours.com okay I'm, I'm starting to build this around the people who are picking up the book and reading it and using it. Okay. Um, so, so actually, this, this is one of my software programming projects, right? I want to build things to, to make things easy. So I have a, a fun little system, which is um, if, if you order the book and you send it to extras at first 20 hours, okay. it gives you a special link. And that okay. link leads to a members-only part of the site where I can in continue to add information and, and, and resources. Right. So one of the fun things, I'm, I'm having so much fun with this right now, I'm starting to hear from people who are using the method okay. to do super cool things that I never would have expected. Nice. So so you always hope that you know as, as an author, somebody reads your material and they find it useful and, and they use it to do something great for them. I just heard from, from a gentleman that I'm, I'm talking with on Monday okay. who went from knowing absolutely nothing about aviation to completing his first solo flight in an airplane in 16 and a half hours. Wow. So he's not the guy that just got arrested for no. sort of... No, <laughs> this, is, this is like, with, this is legit, like this with, is legit. with an instructor doing it in a safe way. Did you hear about the guy, the American Air Force no. pilot that, that, that conned his way into flying commercial jets for a Libyan <laughs> airline and he's got... <laughs> he's just been found out and got arrested. Oh my gosh, well... Not him. Not him, <laughs> not him. But, but yeah, news. like really, really, you know, fun stories of there's this thing that I've always wanted to learn how to do, yeah. like for my job or just because I'm interested. And I finally went out and did that thing and I got a great result. Okay. Um, I, I heard from another one of my, my author friends that, that he knows a lady who's 90 years old. Okay. Like, I always wanted to learn how to play the piano, but I've never done it before. Okay. So I'm going to sit down and go through the process finally of doing this thing that I've always wanted to do. So... <coughs> I'm really, I, I so have... It reminds me of my dad. It's my dad's learning how to play the guitar. Yeah. And he's 68 next month. That's great. And he's like going, It's yeah. never too late. Yeah. No, no, he's just going, <laughs> blink, blink, blink. And that's where everybody starts. <laughs> exactly. And, but he's, he's enjoying it and things. And I think that's... But so I'm really pleased that there is this, there's this emergent sort of, if you like, hub of stories and things. Yes. So tell me, how, what do we need to do? What do people need to do? to get access to that so yeah. it's like they buy the book and then forward your receipt forward in any receipt. form okay so so you know email street receipt screenshot photo whatever yeah. okay um forward to it to extras at first 20, 20 hours. hours so two zero hours dot com okay 
and you'll get a little confirmation link from me saying, you know, we're here, and you just say uh, yes, it, it, and then uh, it, that will take you directly to this back end part of my site where I'm uploading all of all of this cool, really cool stuff. Nice. And and I'm I'm having lots of fun conversations with people who know how to do some really cool things, <laughs> well, and encouraging just to share like what should the first twenty hours of doing this cool thing look like? Well, I think that's the thing is it seems to me that seems to be in many ways will be there are people that will that can deconstruct yes, and there there are people, well there are people that are better at deconstructing than others, mm-hmm. and people that find the sort of deconstruction really hard they just want to know give me the method and I'll go and learn go it go do it yeah I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do I'm not good at sort of doing the research and figuring out sort of thing I just tell me how to do it and I'll just gonna do it so I think it's that's amazing that it hopefully there'll be enough people on there that'll sit share enough stories about skills that they've learned and then more people will go off and just copy them right which is and that's great that's yeah fantastic Cool. I just I was I was rather hoping that was going to yeah. happen. I mean, so was, was what what are you interested in learning? I'm I'm curious. Uh, what am I interested in learning? I am interested in learning. Well, I'm always interested in and 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 training to be a better rock climber because that's what I yeah. do on my on my on my free time. What am I interested in uh, learning? Oh, that's a great question. I'm probably more interested in learning about things like. The ins and outs, the inner workings of things like Google Analytics and SEO and PPC and all that yes. sort of like nerdy, geeky sort of yeah, stuff, no. but can help. Yeah. When I'm talking to kind of the clients and the work that I you know that I do, so yeah, I have to figure out some uh, about that sort of stuff. Totally, and and using those tools mm. is definitely a skill, mm-hmm. right? It's something you use to get a particular result. Yeah. It's something where you have to be able to perform at a certain level to get any useful information out of the tool. Sure. Because uh, because just as it exists right now, there's a lot of information, but it's hard to use that to do something different. Yeah, because you just look at it and you just go, I have, I sort of get what's going on. Yes. <laughs> I have 8 million visitors. Great. <laughs> Yay, me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, right. using that to, to do something different in a business is, is a skill. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's I think practice. That it's a, a, but, it, yeah, it's, it, but it is actually saying, here's the thing that we're going to do, and then and then making that, that happen. So, so future plans for... For Josh, is this it? Now you've you've said I'm now being an author, come entrepreneur, sort of like person, or what's the plan? Yeah, you know, it's it's fascinating uh, for for not anticipating being an author, and so so I expected when the personal MBA came out, uh-huh. it's like I really have a good good time doing this research and doing this method. I figured, you know, I'm go- I'm going to be a business teacher, so I'll do the book, right, and then I'll go around and teach and hold workshops and and, and all of that. And you do that anyway. I do that anyway. Right. So, so actually, I do very little traveling on okay. purpose. I hold workshops about this in my uh, hometown of, of Fort Collins. Okay. So, you know, every once in a while, we'll get a, a bunch of entrepreneurs together and we'll talk about business and, okay. and help them do what they, they need. So th- that part is fun. Easy. Re- really people fun. People come yeah. to you. Yeah. But it, it's actually the, the bulk of, of what I do on a daily basis is the research and the distilling and the making of something. So I'm actually focusing a lot more on books okay. um, and new research projects than I ever expected to. So I, I kind of like uh, like to imagine myself as, as basically a self-tenured professor. Yeah, like I, I, you're I, this independent freelance professor. Yeah, it's like I, I just decide, you know, it would, so looking out into the world for what are big, <coughs> complicated, scary areas of life that are really universally important to people. And, and then jump in and do research and try to find the important stuff and then put it in a format that other people can find it useful. Cool. And right now, the best format for that is a book. So that's what I do. Fantastic. <laughs> Josh, thank you for that. I think that's, that's been really interesting and, and I, I'm, I'm really excited to see how the sort of the hub, the first 20 hours, sort of the back end, the membership sort of side of things sort of uh, works out and, and um, I'll make sure this all gets written up and big shout out and, and, and to all of that and let's see if we can I don't know. Make as much noise as we possibly can. Sounds good. Nice Thank one. you so much. Thank you. So much fun. All right. <laughs>